Hello, everybody. So, whip making. No one's here yet. But I'm going to do like the Bob Ross thing. I'm going to go through. I'm going to be doing essentially two phases or the first two steps uh, after planning, of course, for what goes into whip making. So the first thing I have is black duck cloth canvas. Uh, you can get this at any craft store. It's usually in their upholstery section. All right. So this is a regular black duck cloth canvas. Um, I already know what dimensions I want to use. Do I have a ruler handy? God, my shop is such a mess right now. I've just shoved everything around. So what I need to do is I need to make a core. And a core, uh, in this particular case, is going to be uh, a shot bag. A shot bag, for those of you that do not know, is a um, portion of a whip that adds um, weight to the handle of the whip. So, who is interested in a quick whips physics lesson? Okay, I should say yes, this is interesting stuff. So, whips physics lesson. Uh, whips essentially are a mechanical device. Um, unlike, say, trying to snap somebody with a towel that relies simply on centrifugal force and uh, you know some simple transfer of energy, a whip actually uses the braid pattern um, like a bunch of hinges. So if you've ever seen a whip work in slow motion, a whip doesn't start and just travel through an arc. It actually rolls. So as you throw the handle this direction, the whip actually curls. So it straightens out, and then the, the tip of the whip is actually following along and straightening out. And what happens is it creates a wave pattern. Um, so it starts with this energy at the top, and it travels along, and then that energy narrows and becomes more intense. So if you imagine water going through a thick, big pipe into a narrower pipe and a narrower pipe, it's creating pressure. It's creating energy as it goes along. Same volume of water. Um, it's just that it's, it's being reduced down. So all that force and energy is being reduced to a fine point. Um, so how you make that better is by allowing more weight to sit in the handle. And so how we do that, there's two ways of doing that. There is just sort of a braided core where you just layer leather over leather over leather, you know, doing multiple layers of braiding. Um, but you can kind of shortcut that by creating what's called a shot bag. And a shot bag um, is a cone that is going to be made out of a material. In this case, it's going to be duck cloth um, leather or duck cloth uh, canvas. And then you fill it with a lead shot. And the lead shot that I am using is, to the best of my knowledge, the smallest commercial shot that's available. And this gets harder and harder to get, which means it gets more and more expensive. Um, let me see if I can show you this with any kind of accuracy. Um, but the, you want smaller shot, okay? The smaller the shot, the more you can pack in, which gives you more density, which of course gives you more weight, but it also, because it's, it's round, it, um, you know, like little grains of, of lead, it maintains flexibility for the handle. So to give you a frame of reference about how big this stuff is, it looks like this. So let me just look in here. So that is my lead shot. And if you were to put it in your hand, and I'm taking a great risk here, people, this stuff is, is toxic. It is lead. But you can see that's 20 grains of, of lead right there. So I'm going to pack the entirety of this uh, shot bag with lead that small, okay? And that will create the shot bag. So that's going to be the first couple of stages here that I do. I'm going to make the shot bag. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, I'm going to wrap it. I'm going to fill it. And then I am going to put what's called a bolster over it. So the uh, thing about shot bags is this, getting back to our whip lesson is there are some manufacturers who make the choice to create a shot bag that extends further down the length of the whip. Of course, the more weight you carry, uh, the more easily the whip flows. And that sounds like a good thing. But because there is so much weight in the whip, what happens is it breaks the leather down more quickly. So what happens is it doesn't break the whip. I want to be really clear about that. But what happens is your whips get noodly after a while, right? If you rely strictly on lead, to maintain, and I've heard of whip makers that make them almost right to the end with a shot bag, right? The full length of the whip. Um, but what happens is you get really, really noodly whips, right? And again, the weight is transferring that energy, not the mechanics of the whip. So what I strive to do is create a balance that lets me add weight 
while still relying on the functionality of the whip to do the rest of the work. The whips, in my opinion, last longer. Um, and to me, they maintain a structural integrity that for me makes them um, better to throw over time. They don't get real limp over time. So what I usually do, unless I have some other instruction, and some people do have specific requests when it comes to whips, is I aim for a shot bag that runs roughly half the length of my whip. So we're going to have a shot bag in this particular case, because I'm doing a four foot signal whip, you're going to have a shot bag that runs two feet. You're going to have a uh, bolster, which is just a leather wrap, which is again going to be in a cone shape that's going to wrap it evenly, but it's going to extend that length. So every layer that you create is going to add length until you get to that final outer braid, uh, on, at least on a signal whip, where the cracker is going to be attached. So you're going to have your shot bag, your bolster, your first braid, and then your final braid will extend it out. So there's going to be three length extensions over the course of this braid. But after the first half of the whip, right, um, all of that is pure leather on the way down, okay, maintaining all of that. And so that taper is really important, right, in the shot bag because you want all that weight, but you want that weight to transfer to nothing. So you want an even transition between the, the weight in the handle that will taper down to just the weight of the leather. Okay, that all makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I need to measure my shot bag. Um, and again, uh, all of these measurements end up meaning something in terms of the final construction of the piece you're making. And my desk, you can't see this, is a brutal mess. Like when I'm moving my camera down like this, I have this ability to kind of, I'm going to clear off a space, but even if you look at the ruler, we're only looking at about two feet of space here. Like this represents fully two feet of space. So I functionally have about 18 inches of working room and the rest of my stuff is just crammed over into a pile here and a small pile developing here. So um, I'm working in tight confines. So uh, I'm using black canvas. You know, obviously the color doesn't matter. The reason I use black canvas is because it lets me um, uh, make my vest samples out of this and people have an idea of what the overall look on, you know, their vests are going to be predominantly. So what I want to do is I want to get this to, um, I'm using a silver Sharpie. There's my two feet. My silver Sharpie is almost dead. I may have another one in my desk. Uh, probably should have more in my desk, but my desk is a huge heaping cesspool of a mess right now. So what I'm going to do is reach over here and see if I have another silver Sharpie that's got a bit of a better tip on it. All right. So there we go. So what I want to do is uh, this is going to be my narrow end. This is going to be my wide end again because I'm creating a cone. So I want this end over here to be a quarter inch. Oh, significantly better. And this end to be, uh, I think I'm going to run this an inch and a quarter. Okay, so an inch and a quarter. I'm going to cut this out. And usually I go ahead and make a couple of uh, shot bags at a time, but I've only got one whip going on right now um, and a cat that I have to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the one. So we discussed shot loaded and why things are shot loaded. Uh, we discussed some whip mechanics and uh, braiding, which is good. So that's a shopping tip. Good questions to ask. How are whips weighted? And then visually to check to see if the braids are straight. Because if the seams on the braid aren't straight, because of the way that the mechanics work, it's following the um, expansion and compression of those uh, braids, like their hinges. If your braids curl, then the whip's going to curl, you know, fundamentally to follow those braids, and you won't be as accurate. And uh, I'm a big believer uh, in signal whips. They're my favorite whip to throw uh, because I find them, uh, I find their accuracy superior to any other style of whip that's out there because of the absence of a fall. Um, it does not rely on centrifugal force at any point. It's always relying on the mechanics of the braid to um, to operate down to the end. So I just find that I get better control uh, through the mechanics of the braid to the end of the cracker than I do with, say, a snake whip or a bull whip. 
And to be fair, a bullwhip, uh, generally the way that they're constructed, constructed is to be longer, although the length has nothing to do with the uh, style of whip. It just seems to be the way that it works out. Um, you don't see many for indoor play. Um, people often prefer snake whips for a variety of reasons, most notably um, the ease in swapping out crackers. But um, I prefer signal whips because of the uh, style of play that I have and the accuracy that I get. So, again, this is a two-foot shot bag. And then we are going to pack this thing tight with lead. Again, it is a number 12 lead shot. I think it's somewhere in the range of 50 to 75 pounds, or sorry, $75 for 10 pounds of lead shot right now. And then we will be attaching the bolster to that. Hopefully I can get to that stage. I'm just going to keep an eye on the, the clock here and see how I'm doing for time when I get done loading this shot bag. So some of these things that I'm going to about to do might seem counterintuitive, um, but hopefully they will um, make sense as I go along. Hey, Steve. So there is my shot bag, or what ultimately will become my shot bag. This is an inch and a quarter length on this end, a quarter inch on this end, all right? Then what I'm going to be using is duct tape, and um, some people actually use duck brand tape. Um, but I've been finding lately that um, I don't like the adhesion on it, so this is Gorilla Tape. Um, and this isn't just random. I have a roll of duck, duck brand tape up there. But I'm just liking right now the, uh, the adhesion better in terms of, um, you know, once these are set in the whip, it doesn't matter. But like I said, I would make a batch of them at a time and then go back and look at them, and all of a sudden my... Uh, my cores were unraveling because the tape was coming undone and it just became kind of a pain. So I just moved to Gorilla Tape because I find that it doesn't come undone before I get ready to, uh, to start building. So there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out one edge along the edge of the tape. Hopefully that makes perfect sense. And then I'm going to need my utility knife here at some point as well. So. I have my utility knife that I'm going to need. Then what I need to do is I need to roll this. So when you put your one edge along the roll of tape, it becomes a little bit easier. I always start at the narrow end. And you want to fold it and then merge your edges. And then what happens is the tackiness on the other side of the tape takes over. And then what you want to do is just give this a little bit of overlap as you go along, okay? Because what happens, of course, is that the tape has a fixed width and the... Um, the core has a tapered width, obviously. So you're going to have more coverage down here than down there. So you've just got to be careful about your angles that you don't just keep wrapping this end up. Okay. And you want to try to get this um, as close to, to touching as possible before you roll it over. Because if you have some stickiness on the inside, it'll keep the lead from flowing down to the bottom. So you just want to be careful of that. All right. So you just do this the whole way up. And again, what you want to do is if you do a little bit of that overlap, just press it over like this. It just keeps it from unraveling. And then I can determine how many wraps around here I want to do. So I'm just going to keep going along here. Hey, Tori. So again, if anybody has any whip questions, please feel free to ask. And then the stages after this, once the core is built and the bolsters put on, is uh, cutting strands for the inner braid. And then I will show you the calculations for how you calculate your strand width and strand lengths, including a taper, because all of these strands will be tapered. Uh, conversely, I'll do those in separate videos because it gives me a chance to clean my braiding table off, which is a huge honk and stinking mess right now. So uh, this is all practical as well. So you're following this along so far. This just takes a second. Um, I presume if you're into this thing, it would be the same technique um, for uh, rolling yourself a massive two-foot joint. Uh, you wanted to acquire more, more whips? Yeah. And I think I've got four or five myself.
So just keep going along here, almost done. But you see how like it's starting to curl like that? Obviously because it needs less coverage and I'm trying to maintain a uh, similar amount of tape around that. I want that to have a consistent or a relatively consistent um, thickness in terms of how the tape is wrapped around. Now why I use tape is because otherwise I would have to stitch this. And if I stitch this, then it's going to create a seam um, as opposed to a flat, um, a flat surface all the way around. So I find tape works really well. And again, when you see how this gets constructed, you'll see how secure this becomes in terms of the amount of material that goes around it to secure it anyway, beyond what's going to be used for the uh, um, just the, the shot bang. So there you go. So you can see I've got this wrapped around. And you can see that my, my tape tapers here, which is what I wanted, OK? So I want the same amount of coverage, or roughly the same amount of coverage, the entire length of the, um, the core, OK, or the shot bag. So then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and trim this right to the edge of the shot bag here. And I'm just following the contour of the shot bag. Using a utility knife, sometimes I use a razor blade. Depends on where I'm at. I never use scissors, though, because they stick to the scissors, and it's a giant pain, because um, duct tape's annoying like that sometimes. And there you go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give this a roll just to seal all my edges of tape here. Make sure I have a nice round shape all the way through. Because down at this end where I folded it over, it tends to take on more of a folded shape than a round shape. But that will be easily fixed um, once you start getting lead in there. All right? So again, give this a roll. Hey, Jesbian. I thought you were on the road somewhere. All right. So now what I want to do is get to the end here where my... Uh, my And there we go. So you have this nice opening here. And there is my uh, shot bag. 24 inch shot bag for a 48 inch whip. So now what I want to do is I want to get my lead, which I put somewhere. Where did I put it? I put it right here. And to make my life a little bit easier, um, I got them in a squirt bottle, which apparently I need to refill. So uh, this is just one of those like jewelry bead scoops. You want to scoop over your container because this stuff will go everywhere in a hurry. And I'm probably going to put maybe four scoops in there for now. It's one, two, three, and yeah, probably one more. Four. And then I totally forgot to do something just to make my life easier. Bubbles! Um, I've got electrical tape. I'm going to use electrical tape to seal my ends. And again, don't be concerned if none of this seems permanent. Um, in a large sense, it's not because all of these pieces are going to be um, recovered by other things later. This just allows me to get everything set up. Okay? So I need two pieces of electrical tape. So now what happens is you have to do a little bit of feeling around here, all right? And what I mean is, so I've got the four scoops of lead you saw me put in there, and they're going to go down a certain length just on its own by gravity, but you're going to get to a point where you can't feel the lead, and you need this packed all the way down. So what I'm going to do, speaking of centrifugal force, is I'm essentially going to spin this. Again, another good reason why um, having good tape helps because I want to pack as much lead in here as I can. I am trying to get as much weight to generate as much um, energy at the handle end um, for these whips. And then you want to feel along, again, because you've got tape in there on the exterior, if any of it is exposed, it will keep the lead from traveling down. So you just want to make sure that you don't have any gaps. So I'm just feeling 
to make sure that I have a consistent um, uh, density um, throughout the uh, throughout the core the, through the shot bag. But again, it's it's flexible, right? It's flexible. It's not it's not that I'm creating a cane or some kind of rod here. I am creating a flexible piece, but I want to make sure that I have equal, like I said, density all the way down. So if you look, when I give this a pinch, right, you can see my fingers aren't squeezing in at any point, right? Like I'm getting a good distribution of that lead. And of course, what happens is the, the more densely packed it gets, the lower it gets. So you have to end up putting more in. Again, I want to load this up over top of my container here. And then I have a little um, dowel that I can use as I get closer to the top because I know that I'm packed in pretty densely to the end there. You want to be careful because this lead will get, you know, you're basically displacing it in there. So you want to get that packed in there tightly. Then what I'm going to do is essentially give this one last scoop. Here, let me show you this holding this over my container essentially as upright as I can. So you see, I've got it here. I want to hold it upright because I want to fill it up to the top because I don't want my, my lead sliding around and possibly creating, you know, divot spots in there. So I'm going to scrape just a little bit of the top off here because I want it to be right up to the top. This is where my two pieces of tape come in. All right. So I want to close seal this. Right, get my edges sealed, then get it pressed down and wrapped. Again, because that's not a really tight seal at the top there. But then what I want to do is take my other piece of tape, and I don't know if you can see this. You see, here's my top. You want to put it up past your top, seal it around, right? Give that a nice seal, and then press the top down. So that'll seal those edges that I that I uh, created, and then it's going to get a cover as well. So don't worry about that. But now I have a nice um, shot bag. Okay. So this is the beginning of what I need to make a whip. And again, this is just you know stage one of many. There we go. So let me get this out of the way. Then what I'm going to do. This is one of the main reasons before I started doing the work that I do that um, I got all this granite because now what I can do to hear that I can roll it again to make sure that it's consistently round all the way through that my taper is right that there's no lumps in it uh, and it's a good rule of thumb if you're going to be doing any kind of uh, whip making to uh, roll it at every stage right you want to take out any of the potential lumps or anything out of it and to maintain a nice round shape all the way throughout right when you start doing this stuff from the beginning obviously when you build on a strong foundation you get sort of better results so there you go there's my my whip core okay now what i need to do is to make a bolster and i'm going to do that right now since i'm here so what i'm using is a fairly lightweight but not as light a weight um, as say like a, um, a sheepskin or um, that kind of thing. This is a chrome tan leather. It's probably eh, one and three quarter ounce, somewhere in there, but really super pliable. Okay, you want something that's got some flexibility in it. Um, it reduces some of the break-in time. Okay, and then what I want to do is because I know that this is um, uh, 24 inches, I want to add length to this. So I'm probably going to end up adding something in the neighborhood of uh, six to eight inches on this. And this is where one little strange thing kind of happens, and I'll point that out. Okay. So I'm going to lay this out, get my ruler. Um, and uh, let's see, 32... We'll probably do this to 32, 32 to 34 is what I want to do. Because after that, then I would have to add uh, seven inches to my braid and then seven inches to my final. So let's do 34, shall we? 
So what I want to do is, uh, I forgot to do one thing real quick. I want to take a quick measurement around my core. And there's an easy way to do that. Cut yourself off a piece of leather, give yourself a flat end, okay? And then wrap this around here, get a pen, and mark it. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting the width around. Uh, that's one measurement. And then I need a measurement at the bottom, okay? So let's do that right down at the bottom of my, and here we go. So we need to create a taper that goes from, I'm going to do this in millimeters, 40 millimeters to 20 millimeters. All right. All righty, so I'm going to do this to 34 inches is what I decided, giving me uh, an extra from 24 to 34 is going to be 10 inches. Really? Do I want to do that much? 24 to 32. 24 to 32. Yeah, let's do 24 to 32. That's 8 inches per uh, extension. All right. So what I need to do is uh, mark my 32 inches. I'm going to put a piece of weight on this end of my leather because it's going to keep falling off if I don't. And it's going to annoy me. So please forgive me while I get this going over here. All right. So I'm going to just, this way this end of my leather doesn't go flying all over the place and falling on the floor. And more importantly, um, moving this line out of alignment after I get it marked. So... Everything's just falling around on me here. That's what I get for having so much, such limited space. And I dropped a piece of granite on the floor. I am just starting to get really annoyed. There we go. Hopefully that helps. So let's try this again, shall we? The realities of life in the shop. There we go. That ought to be better. Get this straightened out. All right. There we are. There you have it, sports fans. Okay, so what I need is uh, 32 inches. All right. Uh, yeah. So from there to there. There we go, 32. And then what I need to do is measure my width at the top, which was 40 millimeters. Forty millimeters. And then at the 24 inch mark, which is my core, Uh, 24 inches, which is here. I know it's going to be 20 millimeters, although that feels a little fat, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller than that. We'll call it, say, 18 millimeters. Okay, and then I'm going to do something weird. Let me, let me show you here, okay? So I want this to taper. Here's my line where my um, core ends, okay? So from over here, to here is 24 inches. You can't really see that if I back my camera, maybe. So from here to here is where my core sits, all right? You see that? So you would think that all I have to do at this point is draw a line that connects my 40 millimeters to my 20 millimeters and keep that running to a point where I have this tip, right? But I don't, because what's going to happen is, if you remember, this piece wasn't cut directly to a taper. It's, ha it's got a flat end. And I don't want there to be, if I take a flat end like this, right? Like if I've got a, a tube that's filled and then wrap something around it, it's going to leave a hollow in there, um, which I don't want. I don't want any empty air in there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of a wedge that I think is going to make sense 
in a second. So what I'm going to do is get my line here for my uh, taper, right? So that's for the, my core. So this part of the bolster that I just marked wraps around my core. And then over here, right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add probably another seven millimeters or so. And then I'm going to taper it to the end. Okay. So that probably seems a little weird to have this stepped taper, but I'll show you why we're going to do that. Okay. So there we go. So now I'm just going to do myself a favor, chop this whole chunk out so I can get rid of this giant hide sitting on my lap, which is annoying me and causing me no end of consternation. And again, just like wrapping paper, if you have sharp enough scissors, you don't actually have to cut. You just got to slide right through that. So let me take this giant hide and move it out of the way gently. There we go. And then we're going to get this cut out, and I'm going to show you how this uh, this comes together. I will lay this out, and then I'll show you how I'm going to wrap this to give you a frame of reference about why that extra leather is... Uh, recommended, at least why I recommend it. Of course, you know, you ask a bunch of different people how they do things, you're going to get a bunch of different answers. So how you do it is entirely up to you, but this is how I do it, and I'm going to explain why I do it. Do the other side. And then at some point later, I'm going to cut all the strands for the inner braid on this. I do an eight strand inner braid and I do a, uh, I'm going to be doing a 16 strand outer braid on this. Okay. So there we go. There is my bolster. Okay. And I'm going to point out this section right here. Okay. So you, I want you to watch that. So I want to follow this right down to the end where my, um, where the actual canvas kind of ends. I want to leave myself a little bit of this tape at the end to keep it stuck at the end, obviously. I don't want that opening up and spilling stuff everywhere. But where this goes, right here, you see how there's a bit of an overlap? I don't want there to be this empty piece in here, right? I don't want there to be a hollow, so I want this to... Um, so there we go, right at that line. Because this collapses. This is thinner because it's just tape. Right? You see that? So what I want is I want, I don't want there to be a sudden drop off that pinches at the end of my core. And so this extra little wrap of leather, um, when you get it wrapped up tight, will create a much more seamless transition from the shot bag into the tapered part of the bolster. So you don't have this sudden drop off here anymore. It just tapers nicely. So now what I want to do is I need to get this all tied up, okay? And how I'm going to do that is by taking a bunch of clips, clipping up my shot bag all the way up, okay? All the way up. And all the way up. Right up to the end, okay? You can see that they're all going to meet. And then I'm just going to run a couple of more clips right along here. Uh, because this is all going to get tied down. The other thing I want you to keep in mind as you're doing this, I probably should have mentioned it a little bit earlier as I was doing this, but there are no sections that have bumps. You saw after I built the core and I built it with tape so that there was no knots, no ties, no seams, 
it's very smooth all the way through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this. And again, I'm going to use tape at the ends to hold this all together because I don't want to tie knots. I don't want there to be any lumps in the feel of the leather and you would be able to feel them if you did that. So I am using a wax thread here. Officially, this is a uh, size 210D, one millimeter. Um, and it is a, a corded wax thread, okay? So what I want to do is I want to get this whole thing tied up. And the clips just keep me from having to pinch the whole thing um, in place. So I can move this clip down. And I want this to seal my bolster around my shot bag, okay? So you see how I'm creating that seam where everything is sealed because of that measurement that I did, right? It's closing it. So I can do a relatively um, looser tie here. Let's tie it around one of those. There we go. Get that off. And then just keep going around and around. And I usually do a, a really, really um, loose tie on it at this point because I'm going to come back with a second wrap. So I'm going down from the thick end to the thin end, and then I'm going to come up again uh, the other direction. Okay. So I just want to get this held in place so I can move these clips and then do a much neater wrap on the way up. This is all just about holding everything in place. For the time being. And again, if anybody has any questions, please let me know. And again, because I'm wrapping this, there's a twist in this string, you know, as it's wrapping around, of course, and I'm just going to basically counter that by wrapping it the other direction, straightening the whole thing out. So I just want to make sure that everything is wrapped nicely. Uh, you can see I'm getting that nice seal. Uh, as much as possible, if you're going to make a mistake in one direction, make it so that this end doesn't touch instead of overlap. Because again, the overlap will create these uh, these bumps in the finish and the feel. So I'm almost down to the end here. This clip is holding my end together. Again, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hop over this clip and tie down my uh, tapered end here. And then again, I am not going to do anything with this because that knot will hold itself in place. I'm just going to turn around and start wrapping the other direction. But I'm going to be putting a lot more um, force into this. I want this to be a lot tighter on the way up. Again, this was a loose wrap to keep everything in place. Now that it's in place, I want to kind of secure everything. Okay. But again, as you look at how this core gets wrapped, this is what starts adding um, stiffness into the core. Um, so when you wonder why whips are so stiff until they break in, you know, we've got to wait for this lead to start shifting around and wait for this leather to start breaking in to um, feel that whip start to break in. And of course, the two layers of um, leather that are going to get braided over the top. And this is, of course, going to be a kangaroo hide whip. So there we go. So I am just going to go around here, giving myself uh, some good tension. You can see I'm pulling as I go along. Um, my wraps are probably three-eighths of an inch to a half an inch at this point. And then just unwind this as you go along because it gets challenging. Okay which is of course ironic because it's just wrapping around and I want to unwrap it so I can wrap it, but ironically it wraps around the other direction. So same thing. I just want to keep going here. Again, doing uh, three eighths of an inch to half an inch.
This is such a clumsy process though. Every time I do it, it looks like the first time I'm doing it. it feels like the first time I'm doing it. Um, you know, I don't, don't do this on camera very often. So I'm, you know, I wouldn't say self-conscious, but I'm looking at it going, wow, this just looks ugly. At least in terms of a process. So again, let me just get this wrapped. When I do a final video of this, I'm going to speed this whole section up so it looks like I know what I'm doing. You don't see all of this little like manipulation that goes on. Of course, as I get to the end, it gets uh, it gets easier. And my thumb gets sore. Of course. But all of this will make sense when I can show you the final piece. There we go. Now we're now we're getting there. Finally. All right. Then what I can do is take a measurement off my core, or not off my core, off my bolstered core now, um, to start cutting strands. And I'll do that as a separate video. So again, I'm just wrapping that around the end. I am, with my lousy scissors, trimming that real quick. And then again, I want to go ahead and just use tape so that I have a nice flat edge and I'm not worried about dealing with uh, knots and stuff in the in this wax thread that I'm using doesn't take much. I just need to wrap it around once to hold that in place. Okay. And there we have it. So steps one and two being relatively done. I'm going to clean this up a little. But again, down here where my taper is, you can see that I've got this nice smoother transition into my taper um, at the end. And so what I'm going to do is take my piece of granite again on my table and I'm going to give this a roll all the way down. And again, you want to do this at every stage um, to make sure that your core is distributed correctly, that all your edges are flat, that you have a nice smooth paper to work with. And you can hear it if it's not smooth. You can hear it go if it's not round. So, There we go. We have a nice round. There we go. It's hard to roll something that's flat. So if it uh, doesn't roll, <laughs> it needs to be a little rounder. And there you go. And there you have now a 32 inch, a little piece of leather sticking out there. I'm just going to trim it. Scissors, 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 which I just all moved out of the way and I can't find a single pair of them. There we go. Just got caught out from under the, the string. So there you are. There is your core with a bolster on it. Uh, my core is 24 inches. I've added my core is four, 24 inches. I've added this to my length, which of course is going to be part of the taper um, when we start braiding over top of it. So 
the next um, clip of this video that I do is going to be measuring my diameters and showing you how we cut strands and then once the strands are cut and stretched, how we taper and prep all those strands to begin braiding. Um, it's a definitely a multi-part process. Um, strand prep is, um, at least I find it really complicated or complex. There's a lot of steps to it. Um, there's a lot of things to be done, uh, little minute things, but all of those things matter and add up. So I'm going to go ahead uh, and end this video. We're at 45 minutes. Seems like a perfect length. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some more work done. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. I will um, post all the versions of this video, or I will be recording all the versions of this video, the parts of this video, to do the uh, entire whip construction live. So bye for now.